Hello everybody, uh, my name's Corin Haynes and I'm one of the co-leads on the Digital Skills project for NASLA. Uh, and first of all, as one of the co-leads, I'd just like to really welcome you to, to your day, to your Digital Skills Day, where uh, we're looking at data. Uh, and I'm really excited to be able to do this uh, session, just to talk a wee bit about what data is and what data and collections is and, and why that's important. Uh, and I think you'll, you'll discover uh, if you don't already know that actually uh, your libraries, all of our institutions are already doing uh, amazing things with data and in fact uh, have always been with data and use data. So um, I'll spend a bit of time just talking to you about data and why it's important and data collections and then you'll get to have the rest of your day. You've got some really interesting speakers both from within your institutions uh, as well as people like Michael Escarides from the National Library of New Zealand who will share with you a bit about what they're doing. So what is data? Uh, well, data is, is a number of things, but basically it's the information that we hold. It's the factual information, and that can be measurements, statistics. Uh, it can also be things like information that is gathered from electronic de devices, like sensing devices. Uh, and it can be information in numerical form as well. Um, and that can also be data about things that we hold and libraries have traditionally hold. And we'll explore that uh, in, in a minute. So we're living in uh, very much these days in what they call the data society, uh, and that's a, a lot about the way that we treat data and the importance that we place on data. However, this, this is not new. Uh, if you look at the, the Romans, the Romans carried out the first census. Uh, they were collecting data, and why were they collecting data? They were collecting data because that data told them interesting things about their society. Uh, and at that time, all as they had was the ability to, to collect that in an analog form and work that through, have it written down uh, and um, make certain decisions based on it. Uh, we know we can do a lot more with that data now digitally, uh, but it's basically the same concepts, whether you're working out how many people live in an area and therefore how much you should get in taxes, or whether you're looking at your collections and the things that you hold and what that tells you and what that tells you about how people are using your collections, etc and we'll start to look at that in a minute. Uh, we're data rich and we're also data crazy. We're surrounded by data. Uh, our lives are overtaken by data. Digital music, uh, documents and eBooks, uh, GPS data, social media activity, loyalty card schemes, all these things, everything that you're doing is creating data. Your personal senses, uh, I imagine that some of you are wearing Fitbits, uh, Apple Watches, uh, you've got a cell phone in your pocket. All of these things are actually collecting data as you go. Uh, and some of that you are actively, personally collecting, and you know you're collecting it because you're tracking what you're doing. All of those different data sources which are around us and are, and are being gathered more and more are rich and interesting, but also potentially can form the parts of collections of data, data sets, which are brought together and enable us to actually analyze and interact with that data in different ways and learn different things. So libraries, libraries are full of data and I've used this picture of, of Lego blocks just because of the sheer enormity of what's there and in some ways the data that we've got in libraries is very much like this. We've got uh, large collections of data whether that be within uh, physical items that we hold as well as the information on those physical items and then digital items. Uh, and for a large part of it, uh, we've never really uh, known what to do or had the ability to do much with that data about the data. And now we are moving in libraries into a, into a space where we can use that data about collections more. We can use the same principles of collecting data from personal sensors and, and GPS and those sorts of things to actually learn more about the information and data we hold and the richness of it. Uh, a little later on, you'll hear Michael Lascarides talk about uh, the different stars that relate to different types of, of making data available and interacting with it, uh, and the five stars which he talks about, which is when you really start to link that data. And that uh, is a huge part of the opportunity in terms of collections data that libraries hold, and the ways that we might start to actually really leverage that, both for our own institutions, uh, for other institutions, but also for, for, for people and how they seek to, to understand and use that data uh, and that information that we hold uh, normally on, on their behalf. 
So why is it important? Uh, well, the first uh, way that it's important, collections data is important for libraries, is really about what we know about our collections. Uh, and, and very much I see this as, as three views. I think the very traditional and first view is a one-dimensional view. And that was really, we always had informational data about what we had and where it was. And that enabled people to find that thing, uh, that item, and, and borrow it or, or read it. We then uh, progressed to a, like a two-dimensional view where we started to get more data on it. So we start to use things like how old is the item and how often is it being used. And that can start to allow us to make uh, decisions about our collection, about do we hold something, do you hold on to something, uh, how valuable is it, how, should we keep all the copies that we've got, those sorts of things. And then we've got the three-dimensional view, which uh, is how all that fits together to tell us patterns about our collection and what they're doing. Uh, and uh, potentially how popular certain types of things are in our collection to help us build our collections more, as well as understanding trends and, and patterns about the sorts of information uh, that we hold that people might want to use. And all of that really does contribute to us uh, making smarter business decisions uh, about our libraries and justifying business cases and those sorts of things. Uh, making us more nimble and also potentially more relevant for our, our communities. And this is something which I don't think libraries have necessarily always been uh, uh, as good at as they could have been or should have been. Uh, the ability to understand what they've got, but also to use the sorts of intelligences that, that libraries have uh, and libraries with large numbers of people who fundamentally work with data on a daily basis to actually become experts and greater experts at using that data to tell them information about their own collections and, and what they do. So we're data wizards uh, and uh, that gives us the ability to uh, interact with the information about our collections but it also gives us the ability to do far more. So then we start to think about the that fact that we've got more data on the data that we know often as information. So we've got the intelligence about the information that we hold and that might tell us about something like how many green books were published in 1941 uh, and on the face of it maybe that's not very interesting but maybe uh, if we knew that information and we also knew that in 1941 the colour green was actually an easier colour to produce than many other colours because of the fact that some of the other chemicals to produce colours were being used in munitions, then that might start to become more interesting and maybe that's information that we haven't had before. That's not a true fact by the way, but it's the sort of thing that uh, uh, you can play with or uh, a data that you can start to understand which we didn't have access to before, before we had the sorts of access to data that we have today. And it's the data we didn't know we had, the sort of data that digital humanities, that public historians, digital historians, uh, data-driven journalism is interested in, the sorts of things where they're actually seeking to plug uh, the, the types of information that we hold and interact with it in different ways. And then there's the data sets, so the data sets that we hold, so pieces of raw data which people are depositing with us so that uh, they can then uh, interpret later. Uh, and know where the stuff is stored, know how to find it, and then uh, in interpret it. And this is a crucial thing for libraries and, and for many types of libraries where large quantities of data are now being deposited so that they can then be used and then reused to create new data by crunching that data and finding out new facts. So we can take, uh, we can take data which has been stored as a data set and allow somebody to create new types of data which can then also be stored and reused. And so it becomes a, 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 a cycle of data being uh, created, used, interpreted, and new data being created from it. And that's a really exciting potential for libraries as they seek to think about how they interact in a digital world. So libraries have the ability to help others to help themselves. Uh, so this is not about our data, but about the data that they're looking for that maybe we hold. So we can help data researchers who are looking for data, and we can help people who are looking for information, and we can help people understand the potential of the data that's out there and how they can realize it uh, so that they can both discover more but also enhance their lives. 
And of course, we've got more data which is being born in bits and bytes, so digital data. So this is digital data and digital information about that data. So we've got more information. We've got more information being stored in libraries in digital form. We've got more access to that information. And then we've got different ways of, of interacting with this primary source. So we're often, uh, in the past, the data that libraries have been creating is a secondary data in some ways. It's the data about a physical item. Uh, we now have the ability also to be storehouses of primary digital data and making that available for, for research, interpretation, and reuse. And I think this is one of the really interesting opportunities for libraries and one of the reasons why the Digital Skills Group was very keen on this being explored as a, a part of digital skills. So there's, there's a number of ways that libraries actually start to interact with this. We can help people find the data sets we can give them instruction and technical assistance about using it. We also apply our collection management and development about collecting those data sets so they will be available. And then we also have to think about the preservation of that data and how that data is shared. Uh, all of that collection and all of that earlier stuff is pointless if the data isn't available into the future in the same ways that we care and preserve for physical items and have done for many years in libraries. And so uh, we basically seek to apply the same principles as libraries have always applied, but to data in the digital sense. So the future. We know that we're in a society that's going to have a greater reliance on data. And we know that libraries will have greater collections of data. And we know that there are new ways of collecting, curating, and accessing that data. And I think that positions libraries in a really good space as key collectors, access points, trainers, and interpreters of that data and ensures uh, if, if libraries make sure that they have the skills, capacity, the staff and the interest to work in this area, that there's a very strong future for libraries working in this space as well as some of the more traditional spaces of collecting. So I hope you have a great day. Uh, I hope the discussion in your libraries is a rich one uh, and I look forward to uh, hearing the feedback from these sessions uh, across Australia and in New Zealand. Thank you.